So welcome everyone. Uh, I think there's a few more people joining us soon, hopefully. A lot of um, people are repeat for this um, talk, international talk, which is called European Perspectives on Diversity. And I think the European is kind of represented today by uh, France and uh, the Netherlands, which is a start, I think. Uh, we have Aude Chandonnet from Grand Format from France and Elisa van der Molen. And you're, you're from the Union in, in the Netherlands and Jazz and L, right? Yes. yes. And we have Katja Luca from uh, Germany, Berlin, from Music Board joining us, which is great because she's worked a lot on the topic. And um, yeah, my name is Bettina Wohle. I'm with Deutsche Jazz Union and I uh, had the project Gender and Diversity there. And I joined, uh, this project was just created this year and this meeting, the Jazz Now at Leipzig, which is taking place today and tomorrow is kind of the start for the project itself. Um, is my sound okay? Just a short check, yes. Okay, so I'm meant to uh, tell you a little a short um, technical uh, introduction. Um, the meeting is recorded. Um, it's just for internal purposes and we won't use it otherwise for, it's just for me basically to later on kind of use material we talked about and but it's not gonna be used otherwise. But um, like by entering, you kind of agree to re being recorded and just leave your video off if you don't want your face on camera. And also you can change your names if you don't want to be, if you, there's an anonymous uh, person already there. <laughs> that's, that's quite all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, it's nice to see some people, even if it's only digitally. Um, so this is the, the recording takes place. Um, if there are any students in this meeting uh, who can, I think they can get credits for it, for being part of that, um, please uh, tell us at the end that you need a kind of um, signed whatever uh, from me. And uh, yeah, please be in contact with Karima Best because she can kind of take your names down. Um, okay, I think that was it. Karima, if there's anything else I missed, please tell me now. Karima is there. Um, otherwise, I would um, start by, thanks, <laughs> so everything seems to be all right. I would start by um, saying a few words on what the project is about, and then I would um, turn over to uh, my discussion guests. I, I think that the format of, the, of today's discussion should be rather informal, um, just to talk about um, what our experiences are in the field of diversity, what works, what are problems? Um, because I feel the, the, the project uh, that Deutsche Jazz Union started um, came out of uh, dealing with gender issues. We have in the jazz scene in Germany, there was a study conducted um, back in 2016, which found that 80% of jazz musicians are male and only 20% are female. And of those 20% female, 80% are uh, singers. So there's, there's some issues with role models and gender stereotypes maybe. And they um, started a project uh, and did a declaration on quotas and they actually changed their name. The, it was called Union Deutscher Jazzmusiker before. Now it's called Deutsche Jazz Union because they not only wanted to include the gender issue, but also say that it's not about being German, but about musicians working in Germany. So they've been dealing with this topic a while, but then they found that dealing only with gender leaves out a lot of aspects. And this is what the new project is about. And I think where I'm at um, at the moment is finding out which aspects of diversity are most relevant right now for, for the jazz scene in Germany and which, in which way to address them. So I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to you about these things and hearing some ideas of the audience as well. Um, I would suggest that you, um, the audience is muted so you can't just speak, um, but if you have any questions, and we agreed that we would take questions uh, right away if you have any, uh, just write them in the chat and uh, I will see them or Karima will tell me about them uh, if I don't see them. And uh, yeah, you, I will unmute you and then you can uh, pose your question. Um, so I would turn, I, I, um, Aud was um, willing to share some of, uh, her experiences and the study they did. So I would turn over to Aud 
a little for a little while and then uh, the other panelists can say a little bit about their experiences and their work and then we will discuss them. So yes. all please, thank you. Yes, of course. So I, so just a few words to introduce myself. I'm Aude, the chief delegate of Grand Format, uh, which is a French federation of artists. Uh, Grand Format means large size because our aim is uh, to, to defend and to promote the, this music uh, of large ensembles and living condition of artists. Uh, so we realized a study about diversity two years ago. Uh, we realized it with three other networks in France because uh, for us, it was very important to have a global uh, observation to know what happened at schools, what happened in the professional uh, sector uh, of the musicians and what happens in the venues. Um, we worked too with a sociologist uh, to have a, more uh, qualitative uh, observations too. So I will present you the, the five most important uh, points of the study. And then I will present what we plan to, to organize uh, after the study to, to struggle uh, against problems we, we identified. Um, I will share my screen to, to show you the, the points. Okay. Okay. It's okay for everybody. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so the first point, uh, as you know, is that it is not a surprise, as we said. Attends, sorry, because I have just. A, okay, I just have to share something else. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so uh, as you know, jazz is a very masculine artistic field. Uh, we have pretty the same information that you gave just, uh, just before, Bettina. So as you can see in France, uh, men represent 75% of students in jazz classes, 42% of jazz teachers, and 85% of musicians in big bands. <clears throat> Uh, another important number is that 32% uh, of big bands currently have no female musicians and never have had. Okay. Um, this number is not here, but <clears throat> we know that uh, men represent 85% of musicians in St. Venues. And in these um, pictures, we can see that 78% of the shows are mainly male shows. Uh, what is a mainly male shows? It is a, a shows which, um, which have more than 70% of male musicians. So. Uh, Okay, uh, second major result of the survey, and you know it too, uh, men and women don't play the same instruments. So, so first, uh, voice comes out as a mainly female instrument, and as you can see, in jazz big bands, women make up only 12% of instrumentalists and 83% of singers. And we can see that it is the same among professional training students. So we have 71% of female students who plan to becoming singers compared 24% of males and 54% of male students who plan to become instrumentalists compared to only 8% of female students. And uh, another thing more qualitative uh, and very important is that the musical skills of female singers are considered natural and innate since they come from the body and are often belittled in jazz. So instrumentalists do not always view female singers as fully fledged colleagues, as musicians of equal level, credit and value. And female singers are also confronted to much prejudice, as we can see in the quotation here. Problem. De, voilà. Okay, so if we look what happened in the bands, uh, we can see that women play mainly in the woodwinds and street sections. 
And uh, it is interesting to see that this, this uh, section categorization is also valid during training years. So as you can see, female musicians in professional training start by learning piano, singing, and keep on with singing and piano. And male students start by learning the guitar, the piano, and the drums, and further their training with the guitar, the bass, the drums, and the piano. And we can see that the, the phenomenon is the same with the teachers. They, they play the, the same instruments. So uh, if we read the work of a sociologist, uh, these results confirm the perpetuation of a gender categorization of musical instruments in jazz. And uh, a lot of sociologists shows, have already shown that instruments have a gender in that they are associated with gender stereotypes. For example, girls' fragility, girls' discretion, uh, boys' uh, energy, ostentation, and this leads to the overall representation of women in some instruments. Um, okay, the second point, very important, is the difference of the career, because uh, we can see that men and women don't have the same career. Uh, to start, uh, we observe that to gain access to a career as a professional jazz musician, women often have to be overqualified as a proof of their artistic worth. Thus, more female musicians than male ones in jazz studied in the major public music schools. And the other thing is that we can see that they make the best school, but in fact, they have more difficulties to keep on being professional musicians as it is difficult for them to have access to professional networks, those networks working mainly on a mutual agreement basis through cooptation, affinity, and working with male sociability firms. So, um, so we can see, for example, it's interesting. Okay, so it's interesting to see that women uh, start their first bonds only when in professional training, whereas the men almost create a band with friends as teenagers. Uh, so you can, uh, we don't see it, but in professional training, 70% of men play in at least one band outside of school, but only 50 women do so. Okay, another important thing is that we can see that Right. It is just uh, what, uh, what I said. Okay, the boys begin more earlier to, to play with friends and uh, girls begin later, but with very professional colleagues. Okay, and after we can see that the family life doesn't have the same impact on professional life. So, um, at first, pregnancy and having a child can lead to a temporary withdrawal from the music scene, and that can lead to their exclusion from the professional sphere. On the opposite, family life doesn't slow the career development of male musicians, not just because they don't get pregnant, but also because when they have children, men can generally count on their partner to deal with and organize most of the family life and chorus. So as we can see it, Mortain, uh, which was a sociologist, said women release men of their daily obligation load so that men can organize their creative space. Uh, and uh, during the talk with, uh, with the, the women, we, we saw that this inegalitarian situation generates a lot of doubts among the female musicians and uh, as two possible reconciliation of their professional and personal lives. And some even talk about giving up having children. Okay. Um, so I, I will uh, bypass this part, but to, to conclude this first aspect, uh, we can see that there is a double phenomenon of segregation. The first segregation is a horizontal one, limiting women to certain activities and repertoires, in particular singing. And the second one, vertical, prevents women from 
gaining access to managing position and better paid uh, positions. So uh, about this second kind of uh, segregation, uh, I would like to share some other numbers. Uh, Voilà. Okay. So we can see that only six big bands have a female conductor, um, and this has an impact on composers. And uh, we we can see that bands conducted by women are more likely to play pieces written by women. So 100% of big bands with a female conductor do so, compared to 38% of big bands with a male conductor. Okay, and the, the last point of the study, we want to speak about uh, the place of women and men in support function. So you can see at screen that the administrative teams in jazz bands and diffusion structure are mainly female and the technical teams are mainly male. Um, and we can see, uh, that is the number in diffusion structures. We can see that artistic direction and programming, as well as general management, are mainly male activities. So we can see that the gender division of work exists in the administrative and technical field of jazz and improvise and in the, in the same. So we can, we can say that men deal with artistic expertise and technical mastery, and women deal with planning and interpersonal tasks. So, um, yes, and uh, the other thing which is important to finish is to see that the female administration professionals clearly identify that the underrepresentation of women in key positions also stems from differentiated socialization modes and the internalization of gender stereotypes that leads to the self-censorship of women in the professional sphere. Okay, so that's all uh, to sum up the study. I just want to share a, a last thing to finish. Um, okay, just to sum up, we, we to sum up, we identify four main obstacles to equality. Uh, we can, uh, we could have organized differently, but it's uh, it's a way we, we choose. The first is uh, the, the stereotypes and cultural construction of gender. The second is the difficulties with entering and maintaining employment. The third is the lack of visibility of women, and the, the fourth is the sexualization and gender-based violence. And uh, we think that there is a lot of way to struggle against it. We, we choose to work on these uh, four points. Uh, sorry, because in fact, I, I realized you. Okay. Sorry, I just put the, the four uh, obstacles I described mm -hmm. because I forgot to share. Mm -hmm. So here you are the four main obstacles that I just uh, Said, but with my English, it's more easy to see it directly. <laughs> and uh, the, the action we would like to, to work to, to fight back these obstacles. So we plan to, to, to create training activities, to organize communication actions, to develop some resources, and uh, make a lot of prevention about uh, gender-based violence. Um, more specifically, just to finish perhaps, um, because we have a lot of work and we can't do uh, <laughs> all now, but we choose to work um, um, on the two, two directions. The first action we would like to, to make, and which is the more easy, is uh, to create a special uh, space uh, resources of, of resources to gather all the resources which exist um, and we uh, and uh, for the jazz and the music because we have a lot of resources, very good, but very general. But we don't have a space just for musicians and just for the jazz. And we think that the more important is to give visibility to these resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why the first thing for us is to create a special space, uh, 
specifically for the musician of jazz. Uh, the second part is uh, the second action we would we would like to make is to organize training. We want to organize two types of training. The first is a training uh, to deconstruct the stereotypes uh, and cultural construction of gender because we think it is the, the basic thing. And the second thing is what we want to organize a training to prevent against uh, gender-based based, uh, violence. And uh, that is the, the first step for this uh, big uh, struggle. <laughs> thank you. If you have questions... Okay, please, thank you. Uh, thank you all for presenting. Yeah. Um, I was... Yeah. yeah. I was actually... Uh, thanks for presenting that and for sharing that. I was um, surprised by many similarities we have in the scenes. And um, so that, that's interesting and a fact uh, that we should think about. I would actually love to um, ask Katja a little bit about, um, if it's okay, um, about her work, because I feel that um, like this focusing on gender is very, uh, yeah, it's, I'm wondering where, where that comes from. Is it's a large issue, but there are other issues as well. Katja and you and your work have tried to address other issues of diversity as well. I mean, you you are with Music Board, which is a funding organization, and you have different funding lines, and you organize each year pop culture festival in August, and this year it was only digitally. And maybe you can just tell us a little bit about your work and how diversity figures into it. That would be great, I think, to open this up to, yeah, more than gender, basically. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you also for the presentation. I think it's not very much surprising. It's the same all over the world. It's the same uh, in all the cultural um, places, venues, um, doesn't matter if it's jazz or pop culture or classical music or the so-called yeah contemporary music. Uh, maybe jazz. It's yeah. That's that's what I what I hear sometimes from from people to whom I talk in Berlin, like Julia Hülsmann or Nadine Deventer, um, um, the cultural. Um, director of Jazz Fest Berlin, the first woman, uh, um, just saying, um, uh, curating Jazz Fest Berlin since, I don't know, 50 years, it was, there was she's really the, the first one, this is really, oh my God. So, um, yeah, what, what we are doing, um, since I started a Music Board, the funding organization, and also before, because I'm coming from the music scene, uh, I worked a lot in the contemporary music and was a curator myself and did a lot of stuff. Um, just looking what is going on and really looking after the discourse we are having right now. And what Music Board did for, from the beginning was just looking at the music scene and just pointing out, um, as you did it in your um, presentation right now and just seeing that there are always men in the main positions. I am very often the only woman in meetings still because in the music sector it's like this and also looking how many uh, female musicians are in the lineups and stuff like this so we try to get a picture what is going on and I really try to make it shorter because it's a long, for sure, it is a long way. We started Music Board in 2013. Um, and we started the Festival Pop Culture in 2015. And we are also doing the Fête de la Musique in, in Berlin. And for everything we are doing in all our teams, diversity is a very, very big topic. What we're doing right now is that we're doing a lot of trainings because diversity means a lot more than I cannot see all of you. I can just see a few white persons. I cannot see if there are any person of color, black person of color into this meeting. I can see one man. <laughs> I don't know how many, how many men are really in, in this panel because that would make sense that we've got a lot of different people um, representing the society because they are not only white persons. So 
uh, first of all, diversity means that Music Board, for example, is really looking after diverse juries, teams, um, lineups, and all the stuff we are doing. And that means person of color, queer music scene, um, means people with disabilities as well, um, because diversity means much, much, much more than just men or women. Um, so this is a very important point and you cannot only talk about gender stuff and then talking about diversity because being male or female is not the discourse in 2020 because it's much, much, much more. And so what Music Bird is doing, um, we have diverse juries and the juries um, get a yeah, like an instruction before they start their work. So they have to um, uh, say that when they choose, for example, act, because we've got a residency and scholarship program, so we are funding musicians directly, and it has to be 50% women. Um, they have to be um, person of color, queer music scene, and also person of disability getting a funding. And then sometimes people from the, from the government or from the um, other funding organizations, they, they come and they say, yes, but it's a jury decision. So why can you tell them? And I said, and this is really my work because I'm the managing director of Music Board Berlin. And I tell the juries and everybody we are working with that they have to work like this. And this is really something Everything you, you showed in your, represent, uh, your presentation is right and cool, but you also have to talk to the society. You have to um, think about sanctionizing people who are not working diverse. That's how we are working, because if you are a festival in Berlin and you uh, do an application um, and want to have money from us, if you apply with a white male lineup, you will not get our money. That's for sure. That's how we are working. And this is really cool because it's so much working. We had some discussions in the beginnings and after a while, really everybody is thinking about. And if people come and say, oh, I'm so sorry, they're only white men. Um, we couldn't find any musicians. Sometimes we just send them a list with female, queer, person of color, speakers, musicians, very cool, um, very, very, yeah, how to say, there's a big variety of people you can book. And it's much more than just doing trainings and because everybody knows the problems, you have to act and you have to fight to just saying to, for, for, for these rights because it's, Sometimes it's very simple to, 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 change, to change something if, you, if you're in a position giving money or in a, in a position like music, but doing really um, having yeah, decisions from juries, you have, them, yeah, you have to tell them how they, what diversity means. And this is what we are doing and for our own festival pop culture for sure we 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 are into a process as well right now but um mean what 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 curating really means but we've got i don't know about 60 70 percent women queer and poc person in the lineup and this is really not um, in Germany, we say Raketenwerk. Uh, it's really, um, it's not rocket work. It's really simple. It's cool. You just can do it. Talk to the curators, talk to the festivals, talk to the people giving money and um, tell them that it's not longer cool um, doing white, having white uh, lineups. And also if you, if you build up new structures, um, you have to be sure from the beginning that you've got diverse people in networks. And if you have diverse people in networks, you will also get a really different result at the end. 
um, because if you let people talk from different perspectives, you will get another, you will get something really different. This is really, you can see this in your, because I'm not so much into jazz, only a bit, but you can see the difference if you see the, the lineup at Jazz Fest Berlin since Nadine Deventer is creating. It's um, really different to what it was before. Thanks God. And this is also, yeah, if, if my job would be done by, rem by a man, I, I really think, I'm really sure that things would have been different because, and maybe that's my, these are my last words, in networks, as we can see, and as women are telling me and what we see, if you've got a network, um, white men really love to, to ask their buddies. Most of the time, they're also white boys working together, building up new st stuff, building up new groups, um, building up new networks and networking through each other. So you have to make sure that networks are becoming um, more um, um, diverse. It's in this way, really, really simple. And if you've got money, you can give others. Um, don't give us always to the same people. And I think um, that really works. I just can tell you what, how we are working. And I can also tell you that um, I don't only have friends working like this. As you can imagine, there are also people um, that are not really happy how we are working because they have to think about their, um, um, they have to think about equality because everything we are talking about is something like really getting, talking about equality. And it's in a way as simple as this. We have to work on equality in, in all these subjects. And I would say, I can say we are on a way, but it's, it will take years and years to, to get this equality, but we are on a way. And yeah, it's not cool working any longer as it um, is shown in the presentation. Maybe so far. <laughs> Thanks, Katja. This is actually why I wanted to have Katja along because I feel that, um, yeah, you and your work are um, already at a different place than the jazz scene. I had this meeting this morning, Benjamin was already also there, um, in which we talked about the equality uh, project of Deutsche Jazz Union. And they said that at the beginning, they wanted to have a diversity project, but they realized that the, like the jazz scene or the membership is not ready uh, they said they said there was so much resistance against uh, any aspect of gender already gender was really difficult to kind of push through as an issue that is important so this is why they decided to focus on that and I, I, I probably odd this is uh, similar with you um, but it's, it's I think it's it's really difficult uh, to kind of get the balance between taking people along and going where true equality is achieved. And I'm, I'm just wondering how that works out, which is why I think it's really interesting to have all the presentation and Katya, what Katya said side by side, because it really shows that different, even in the music scene, they're in like modern music genres, there's such a difference. And, um, and Urchan Karadinis, who's gonna be joining me at, on the panel tomorrow, he said that this is really uh, typical of the discourse at the moment. That is kind of um, this asynchronicity. I don't know if that's an English word, but like that people are on the one hand are really uh, impatient and they want to go ahead with gender equality and di further diversity uh, like race and uh, so class. So I think this is on the one hand, there are people who are really impatient. On the other hand, there are people who don't see the problem at all and who see, feel that all action is kind of why why do we need anything especially in jazz where people feel that the genre already is very open uh, and they're open by uh, definition <laughs> so
So um, I, I would uh, maybe talk to Alistair for a um, while uh, and hear what her perspective on what has been said is, and then we can just open up the discussion uh, to more people because I would be interested in what other people have to say. Alistair. Well, I think like uh, my predecessor said, in, in all of Europe, the situation is a bit the same, that there's not a lot of women playing jazz. I know here in Holland, we try to promote uh, places for women, for, for instance, by uh, making it for subsidies, one of the requirements. So whenever there's, there's a lot of festivals who agree that if they have uh, a lineup that there is a certain amount of women in the front line. Uh, so a lot of projects, also a lot of new big bands, for instance, they, they really try to include as many women as, as possible. So, and I, I think uh, one thing to keep in, in mind is that uh, jazz music is not necessarily the, a, a big career move. I mean, the, if you are very successful as a jazz musician and you, do the, you achieve the highest of the highest of the highest, you still will not be rich and you still will work very hard and you will still not be very uh, well known. So uh, as a career move, being a jazz musician, it's maybe not the highest you can achieve in, in society. So it is something that takes a lot of work. Uh, so that makes that every group of people that might feel that they are uh, already a little bit behind in, uh, in all kinds of emancipation, they might go for something that makes money or that make, gives you more visibility. So I think for, for that reason, jazz music, it's maybe not the first one uh, to, to be uh, very hip with everything. And in the meanwhile, when I look at the, at the young generation, I see a lot more young people. I see a lot more horn players. And when I talk to the young guys, I, I actually, I'm a trumpet player myself. I play a lot with young people they don't take sexism that I'm even used to. I've, I've seen situations that I'm on stage and somebody out of the audience says something that is actually a little bit on the edge and I'm sort of used to it. And then uh, the guys from the band will stand up for me and say, well, really? <laughs> so I think that there is, uh, in a way there is progress being made. There is a lot of, uh, people who try to promote visibility of uh, women in Holland. So there, there is progress being made and it's, it's hard everywhere, I guess. Yeah, thanks, Alistair. I feel, yeah. <laughs> Anyone well, want to react to that? Well, when I was young, that, that's something I can add to it. When, when I was younger, because I, I have been very, uh, in, in, in a very lucky situation that from the very first moment I started playing jazz, I was 15 and everybody around me adopted me. So all the friends of my father were giving me all the uh, CDs they had. I got cassette tapes of Clifford Brown, Brown like the complete Clifford Brown, the complete Fats Navarro. They, they all gave me a lot of stuff and I, I went to jam sessions and I, I was hanging with the guy. So that, you know, I have always been in a very happy surrounding. So, and I always thought, well, a creative thing like uh, playing jazz, why would you need role model, uh, model if it's about uh, creativity? And then later on, I sort of changed my mind because still, even within me and within the surroundings, there's a lot of stereotypes, I mean, there are stereotype types every, everywhere. I mean, we all know that a guitar player cannot read, and we all know that a trombone player will be drinking. You know, we, we all have uh, a, a lot of stereotypes, but there's a lot of things that you don't even think about. And I think that making visible, uh, that you shouldn't take a lot of things for granted, and making visible that there is a lot of good composers, players, and giving them a stage, I, I think it does help. 
So I, I sort of changed my mind about the, uh, the, 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 the thought I used to have, like why would you need a role model? I think role models are important. Mm -hmm. Okay, Art Katja, do you want to? No, just maybe because what, what you uh, said, Bettina, that, um, that there is only um, at this time a gap maybe for gender um, um, topics, and this is also very hard to, to talk about maybe in the jazz scenes or whatever. Or, Society, so I just can say that the people um, um, in the top positions, you just have to, to realize that they have to give up privileges and they do not want it. So you can, they will always tell you, what are you talking about? It's fine, it's going on, come on, there is a change and blah, 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 blah. And it's always about Getting equality means giving up privileges for a lot of people, also maybe for us as, as white people, for men, and so on. And they don't want to give up privileges, and therefore they will always tell you, ah, it's not possible this time, maybe next time, maybe next year, not yet. And I really, I just can tell this, and maybe you, you think that I'm a, like a fighter, and yes, I am and I have to do this like this because I really learned that you will not win anything if you if you just throw um, yeah softballs it's it's not like this it's really it's a hard hard fight and you do you have to do this and we have to do this together with the men with the other people you just can do this you have to do this together and I know a lot of men and they say, hey, we talk about these topics. If, we're, if there are panels and there are only white men on a panel, um, we, we tell them we will not join this panel because this is really not possible. Not in the year 2020 that you have got panels only yeah. with um, white men. So as a man, please do not join. Yeah. So it's just... Um, as I said a bit here before, actually, I, I'm not part of only female panels talking about our topics. Mm. Because why? I don't have to tell you. I, I'm really um, honored to tell you right now. But I, you have to tell it to the others. And you have to get reactions from the others. Because um, I think, I would say, Bettina and me, we're in a very same position or just talking about stuff, but it's much more interesting and, and, and um, yeah, higher intense to talk to, to others that think everything is fine. You don't have to change something. So, um, and it's really, it's really like this. And I just can tell you that we, since we've got Black Lives Matter, Me Too, that we, as an as a organization, Music Bot, we are having a lot of um, topics and there are a lot of people um, from the music scene talking to us, talking about sexism, racism, that they, as a person, um, um, have in their life. And right now, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a way that people really say, I'm, I'm not any longer um, um, just, um, I don't know the English words for that, but I'm talking about racism and sexism because it's really there. And this is really a difference to former years because right now people are talking about what, they, what, they, what their life, their normal life is outside. And this is really good. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, thanks. Are there any questions from people who aren't visible? I would actually appreciate it if you were visible, but it's okay if you don't want to. Um, or any questions from the panelists to each other? Well, actually yeah. one thing I would like to add is that, uh, that one of our major big bands in Holland is the Jazz Orchestra of the Concertgebouw. And they 
they also try that every every time that someone is not uh, available, they try to have uh, female players when when possible. So at some point, I was traveling to Turkey. We were playing in Izmir on a festival, and shortly before, I had been in contact with a Turkish lady who had a daughter who played trumpet. And then just a week before the concert, I remembered that she also lived in Izmir. So I sent her a little message like, hey, I'm playing in Izmir. Am I correct that this is your town? And they came to the concert, the, the woman and her little son and her little daughter who plays trumpet. The father had deceased a few years ago. And they were so happy to have, to see a woman playing trumpet. So there, there was a lot of uh, pictures taken because for the little girl, it was apparently very important to see that it's possible to play in a big band that travels abroad as a woman. So that, that was actually one of the moments that I thought, well, this, this is one moment that representation really works. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Alistair. Um, I was thinking about a few things um, I talked to people about uh, in the last few days in preparation for these meetings. And one of them was um, that if you, if you don't have to think about privileges, you've, you've got them. It's a privilege to not think about privileges. So um, I think that's because it's really hard to talk to people about what's going on uh, if you feel discriminated against because they don't actually understand in a way and most of them might, might not be willing to give you the time and another thing i was thinking about listening to you was that uh Erchan Karadin is, uh, whom i already mentioned he's at leipzig actually and doing a lot of uh work on these topics there um he said that um like trying to work in diverse environments is actually hard it means uh, investing resources because if you only work with people who are similar to you, you kind of know how they feel, what they like. And this is much more easier than if you deal with people who might not come from a similar background or might have different ideas about the world. And so it's in the first instance, it's an investment. But he also said that in his, in, in his experience, it's much more interesting if you invest that and if you try to see what's, what other people think about the world and what they feel and what their worries are and what their hopes are and then what happens and especially for a creative endeavor like jazz what happens also aesthetically maybe might be much more interesting than if you only deal with groups that are very homogenous so i find that very interesting and i'm still thinking about how to uh yeah engage with that in my project Somewhere i always have this secret hope and I actually I even believe in it that uh, if you're talking about homogenous I always think whenever you all like the same music <laughs> that makes it look very homogenous not necessarily you know as soon and especially within trumpet players whenever I meet a trumpet player I always feel that we are immediately friends so I, I think that's the kind of stuff we, we would like to have homogenousness in just, you know, when you all like the same kind of music, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But let's make sure that everybody uh, that represents uh, the whole group has to, you know, is part of the group. And to, to me, I think our purpose is that everybody who loves jazz should be part of the big jazz family. That's what I think. But not everybody has access to this lovely family. It's like and this. That's, and that's why we're talking now. <laughs> but I, I, I think. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Our goal should be to include everybody in the big jazz family, and that the whole idea is to be together as a family. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, the, the, as Katya said, um, not everyone is, is able to join right now. If, um, I mean, if the, if the group is really kind of similar, they, there's something happening which makes it that homogenous, as we were saying. And so we, I think, I'm, I'm thinking about what to do, basically. I'm, I'm thinking about now we realized jazz scene is not really diverse. And it's actually 
come a long way from its starting points because it, it used to be set in a very different societal context. So that's also interesting that this kind of comes from a very different surrounding and a very different also racial markup. Uh, and now it's this kind of mostly white, as, especially in, in Germany, maybe not in other places, um, mostly academic uh, music. And it's, it's interesting to see how that happens and what, why is it that way? Why do certain people feel that they don't want to become jazz mus musicians or they can't afford it? I mean, I think, Alistair, you mentioned that jazz is a business where no one gets rich. So I feel that the resources are that scarce that everyone that might, I always try to explain the resistance against these topics also with that uh, everyone is already rather poor and the has difficulty getting along and that they, from these small resources, they don't see how they can share. I, I, I think that just uh, this makes all the differences in society bigger. It's because the resources are so poor. I think the same uh, problems go in a lot of fields. I just think it's very visible in some fields because uh, uh, the, yeah, because the, the, the money involved has a certain uh, dynamic to it. So a career in jazz, it has a certain dynamic to it, which makes the differences in uh, opportunities uh, or in cho choices for people with some opportunities, it makes the differences bigger. For instance, to, to be able to be a successful, very successful player in jazz music, you must have started very young. You must have had a lot of discipline. You must be smart enough to promote yourself. You must be smart enough to talk different languages, uh, make a newsletter, engage with your audience, know about uh, personal relationships, know about promoting yourself. There is a whole lot of capacities you have to have. You have to invest years and years and years and years, have started when you were young, and be very talented. Well, that's not a whole group of people. The group would be bigger if music education would be available for, for everyone uh, in every school. That would already change things. Mm. And then if you look now, uh, what is it, if people are going for a music career, what, what are the most diverse uh, music careers? That, those are the ones that sell. So if you go to the hip hop, for instance, urb, there's a lot of urban music where there is people making money. If you can make money, people of all kinds of backgrounds will try to be a part of it. So that, you know, that there is uh, certain things that also have to do with uh, education and with the whole thing before, and it has to do with the stereotypes as well, like we said. So the stereotype of a jazz musician is maybe not the hottest thing on earth, so, um, yeah. are we are we satisfied with that? I, I feel kind of uh, well. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, honestly, <laughs> I, I think um, the, the 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 one of the big strengths of jazz music is that we follow our hearts and we play the thing that we think is beautiful and also that we think is uh, very uh, beautiful intellectual maybe music, but something that makes our clock stick. And it's some, something that we make uh, out of our own interests. And I think that's also what makes it less easy accessible for people who, who want to listen to it or who want to go on with it. But in general, the, the whole image problem, when I go to a, a school and I uh, do a workshop for 10 year olds and I play a little bit, they all do like that. So it's not the image music of the sound of the music. It's maybe the image problem of the way it's presented. I don't know, but that's another question, you know? So the image, that's one thing, what you have to do with, for it to become one of us. Well, that's a lot, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, just to complete to say that yes, we observe the same thing. It's very difficult to speak about uh, 
it's a problem when we speak about uh, privilege uh, in our network uh, because of course musicians are confronted to a lot of difficulties so they they don't want to speak about it they say no we are not privileged but we, yes i i totally agree uh, with you uh, i think it's very important to recognize it and uh, the other resistance that we saw is that um that's true that all the musicians um trust in jazz because of its history, you know, because in the past it included a lot the, the minority and uh, all the people. But I think that it's true. We have to recognize that now it's not the case and that we have to work for this. And uh, just, just to say that um, I don't know what happens in the other countries, but here in France, we have a lot of problems to make studies about diversity uh, because it's a lot of questions that we can't ask to people uh, there is some information which are private or this kind of things, and uh, I would be very interested to know what you can ask and what you don't, uh, what you can't ask. And uh, just the last, the last thing is that I think that the the to to worry about uh, the diversity is um, is more important that than all because. Um, you know, the, the problem of the diversity, I think, is the problem of the audience, the public, because we can see that the public is more and more old for the jazz. We can see that young people don't come a lot and uh, that it is a, more and more uh, something like uh, an intellectual music or this kind of thing. And I think that if artists don't, don't take this problem of diversity with, a, with very uh, cheerful actions, it will be a problem for the jazz, which, which uh, will be just a, um, like, you know, a specific music, but not a popular music like mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking that, um, I think that that's definitely a problem. It's, it's an issue to, to think about, but um, I feel that also, not only is it kind of commercially important to have younger audience so we don't lose our audience completely when they all die. I think that's, um, I, I feel that um, what my perspective on diversity was that um, the more and more I read about it and the more I thought about it and I feel that I'm really at the beginning even though I started a while ago, I still feel I have so much to learn but I felt that if I don't deal with these issues, I'm, I'm part of the injustice that's happening. Um, I'm kind of excluding people and that I feel that that's also at stake here that that you can't be an innocent bystander in this issue you know if you if groups are kind of homogenous as I was saying there's some kind of exclusion taking place and if you're in that group you're kind of part of that exclusion if you even if you don't mean to it's structural it's not that you can to people, but somehow it's happening. And I, I from, like for myself, I felt that I really want to do something about it. And this is kind of my motivation right now to, to kind of learn more about it. And um, I'm just interested in how people feel about that. I'm, I'm still not sure how to go about it, but I feel that at least you get started and you, you kind of, it's a process. Someone was saying it's a process and you have to get, at least get the process started. And I think it's, and you, Talking about decolonization um, and jazz, this is really a very big topic. So if you start talking about this, asking people to, yeah, to 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 have a to make a keynote about this, and then include or invite other people, because you, I think, as you said, but I'm really with you. You have to. You have to be active. It's not just standing there and watching stuff and saying, oh my God, this is really too much because we are so much in it. We are part of the cultural scenes. We, uh, we have to deal with it. And it's really not always have doing the diplomatic way. Sometimes it's not possible any longer to be diplomatic uh, because then you will never change anything. And then like the older audience, we will also die then and be dead before the other generations, younger generations, diverser generations. And then they will say, what 
did you do during all these times? Why did you take the action, doing something, um, talking about this, inviting people? There are some um, um, examples in Germany right now where you've got new um, managers on the top of theaters, for example, in Munich, we've got the Münchner Kammerspiele, we've got the Risbarbara Mundel, she's the new um, woman in charge. And she, from the beginning, she said, I want to have a diverse team. And she searched so long to find a black person of color being her um, um, press, yeah, marketing press, speaker, a woman, um, a black person of color. And she said, I really have to look it up. And if I only um, put it on the website, I'm looking for a, a, a management of press releases, blah, blah, blah. You will only get white male or female applications. And she was looking, she, she took the action and said, okay, um, let's try to find someone. She found someone, you have to do this work. And then I think you will change something. And it's the same for a jazz network. You have to take a look, are there different people um, you can include, invite to your, to your topics. And then I think this is the process starting. You will change something. I just can tell you out of my juries because when I started um, building them up diverse with person of color, there is a person, a disabled uh, person sitting in a wheelchair as well, part of my jury, and they decide differently because they have different perspectives. And yeah, just wanna encourage you, not wanna say do this, but I just wanna encourage you because I, my, for myself, I had to learn and I was always thinking, how, how can I, how can I change something? And I, I just thought, okay, I can change the, yeah, the, how to say the, yeah, the smaller circles and then the result will be different. Yeah. Throw a stone and it will kind of uh, make waves in a way. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It will have an effect. Um, I'm wondering whether there are any questions or contributions from our kind of audience or people who, who joined us. Is there anyone wanting to contribute something? You can write in the chat or just... No. Well, you can still write in the chat if you think of something later on. Um, okay, so now we <laughs> kind of know that there's a lot of... Uh, kind of things to do. I'm, I'm still wondering, like Katya, you said you started by creating diverse teams and diverse structures. Um, you would suggest that we do the same, right? That's, um, I'm just looking for kind of, so that we go, don't go from this talk and say, okay, now we know that everything is bad and we, <laughs> what, what do we do about it? I, I would love to take something from like, what, what other steps to be taken? I, because I, as I was saying before, I feel that um, part of my job or organizations is also to take along people and uh, kind of tell them that this journey is worth it or something, which I think it's an aspect of that, but also what do we actually do? Do we, do we use quotas for everything? Yeah, Alistair, you wanted to say something. Well, I think one of the reasons that Jazz and L board asked me to be part uh, was that they really wanted to have a woman on board. And they already had one woman, but they thought, well, 50% would be great. So there, there is organizations, uh, I, I know Jazz and L, but also at, at, at the Musicians Board, we are trying to promote people to uh, really actively think about it. So I, I think it, it's a message we should all spread that just try have an eye for it, mm. for all that kind. And, a hard quote, and it's always hard, but just search for it, for an opportunity. If you search for opportunities, you find them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe if people are interested, um, I could just tell you about what we're planning for our project, Gender and Diversity, which has gender <laughs> 
itself in the in the title is still so this is kind of a, a kind of saying what we talked about that gender is still a big issue and people feel that this is the main issue but um, the project itself looks to widen that scope as I was saying and so um, we're kind of trying to get funding for different um, kind of activities and um, I will just tell you and I, I would love to get your feedback on what you think and how how this figures in achieving more diversity so one is um, I felt that um, I, I thought about what what would have the most effect uh, where where do you reach most people and without offending them basically so but taking them along rather uh, so we, we're gonna go to the um, conservatories uh, and kind of do workshops with the professors teaching there so uh, so they would find, kind of act as well, the German word is multiplicator. I'm not sure what the English word for that is. So they teach a lot of students. So what, what they learn, their students will learn, hopefully. And we will try as, we will not only do workshops for people teaching at universities, like instrumental teachers, sing, uh, singing teachers, um, but we will also try to implement it in the curriculum so that they actually, they, I'm, I'm still looking for ways to implement that in a good way that students at universities learning jazz, because most jazz musicians come through university right now, um, that those people um, would hear about those topics early on. That, that was an idea we had. Um, another is to create a matching fund, which um, allows local initiatives in Germany to apply for small sums of money if they want uh, to have a workshop or have someone speak about like, or, or do an anti-racism workshop, yeah, speak about diversity issues. So because I feel that that's very important to have people, if there's an initiative, people actually are already interested in the topic. And I, I felt that it's very important to take that up and kind of uh, uh, enable them to, uh, in their search for what can be done about diversity. We will have all of that if we get the funding, we don't have it yet. Um, we will have, want to um, have scientific research done on what we're doing and conduct um, interviews with the scene about what their issues are, what their hopes are, what their fears are. Um, so we will have someone uh, g gather some data for us because I feel that that's, that's also very important to, to know what you're talking about. I mean, we have a lot of data now on gender inequality, but I feel otherwise we don't know that much. I, I, in Germany this year, this is not specific for the jazz scene, but this year the first AFRI census was taking place. So they counted how many black people are living in Germany just to get an idea because they don't have numbers on that. And they, uh, the um, organization doing that, they felt that it's very important for their own community to know what kind of numbers they're talking about. And I feel that this is similar that you, you need to know what you're talking about and I miss, oh yeah, and the, the, the fourth part we envisioned was um, like kind of an online series, um, giving talks and to have, to have talks like that, just um, kind of uh, see how different diversity issues affect the jazz scene. I, I myself feel that class is a very important topic in the jazz scene because as I was saying, most parents, most jazz musicians have parents which come from an academic background, but there are also other issues and I would love to see how they figure into the German jazz scene. Um, so this is what we're planning and I'm, I, I would love to hear your feedback. And I saw Lisa, uh, maybe you want to say something? Women of, what's that, women of music? <laughs> I would love to have someone else join in our discussion. But yeah, please, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Anyone? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was just talking to my daughter. I couldn't. That's uh, okay. <laughs> no, I, also, I was just. Um, also, right now, I'm a bit. Uh, I have another baby here, <laughs> so we see. Um, Thanks for joining us. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting listening to you. Also, I wasn't prepared to say something right now, but just because you talked to me and I showed my video, and I think it's um, what I just. Yeah, I think what you just said about class is something I missed before. I'm also a jazz musician. I, stu I studied in The Hague. And um, I think that's really important also in the intersection with race and gender. 
and to talk about that because like we said it's not it's really we don't earn a lot of money so and you start the study the jazz study in germany also showed that most most have an academic background and um i also think it's important to so in the direction of what Katja said, also when I listen, without um, wanting to, to offend anyone, when I listen to you talk, or, um, it's also the wording, like when you, when the panels are more diverse, would be more diverse, it's for example, then some, some wordings might not happen. Like when we talk about offending someone, it's about who are we offending, for example. Of course we are offending certain certain money givers, certain people in high positions, but we also have to watch out not to offend the people we want to include. So, and I think these are, these are things that don't happen if the panels are more diverse, because then we, we have to think about how we talk and a bit more and we see, and we also get different perspectives. And I think it's really important also in the jazz scene <laughs> To, um, of course, we don't want to offend anyone. We cannot rush things, but for the people we want to include, it is a matter of urgency. I mean, it's 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 real. It's there. The situation is there. So we also really have to watch out not to offend them by not doing enough. <laughs> That's basically yeah, yeah. definitely it's really definitely. important. Yeah. That's for now, but um. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Thanks for, yeah. It's very interesting. Anyone else want to Not really. <laughs> well, maybe one thing I would like to add, not to the, uh, necessarily to the diversity uh, thing, but to the gender thing, is still to the day of today, whenever I make a band picture, I make sure I have my trumpet in view because otherwise people will think I'm the singer. And I, I think actually that's also part of uh, showing because there's no way otherwise people would think I'm not a singer. So that, that always, you know, it should not be uh, necessary, I guess. Yeah. I mean, how, how people are presented in the media is also a very large issue. I think stereotypes are very common there, that uh, whatever, women are mostly related, like their, how they look, what they were. And I suppose that actually has a, is a larger issue. Um, yeah. So anyone else want to contribute right now? Otherwise I'll just keep talking. I feel that I'm kind of, <laughs> I would love to have someone else talk besides me. I know what I'm thinking. Well, I have some question. What yeah. are, because you're talking about uh, doing more research and getting more data. Hmm. And actually to talk about what kind of data you would need uh, to have a good overview. That's actually what something for, for a discussion. I mean, you're talking about the background of the parents, but... Uh, what I would be very much interested in is for the people uh, who did go on with a career and who quit later, why did they quit? For the people who did go on, what, uh, what do they think that made them persevere where other people dropped out? And I, I, I think there's a lot of different data that you should take into consideration uh, if, if you're going, going on. So maybe it would be also good to have a control group in the classical field, for instance. So what makes, so if, if you would have different genres and you would ask a classical violinist, like what made you succeed in your profession? Was it because your parents were rich, because your uh, education was good, or be, because you started young, or because you had all other privileges? And then ask it to someone who is, a big uh, hip hop artist, a rock artist, uh, a, a, a Schlager singer. It's, it's a German forum, right? <laughs> so, so ask different genres and see if, uh, if, you, if that makes you also search for different data 
that you would want to collect because then you have a bit of a control group idea. Yeah, I found that a very interesting idea. I was actually thinking that only asking people in the jazz scene what they think about the diversity might be the wrong way to go about it because the jazz scene in itself isn't very diverse. So you rather should think about people who aren't in the jazz scene and why they aren't there. Um, I think um, Benny, I mean, is doing a little bit of research about jazz education. Uh, do you maybe want to share something about that? Uh, yes, okay. I. Um, I write a dissertation about jazz education, but um, and uh, this is a topic, important topic for me too. For me too. But uh, what I wanted to say is uh, yes, I think uh, it's not so easy because if you ask uh, the average jazz musician, he says, "I have enough problems. I'm in the, in the minority already, and now um, I have to." Uh, help another my minority, something like that. And the other point is, I think what help is, what can help is, uh, are the institutions. Because um, a part of the jazz community is still very free and wants to be free. And uh, it was uh, criticized that jazz education uh, went to the in institutions, but it can be an, an advantage too, because institutions uh, can build uh, um, rules, at, uh, uh, yeah, establish rules uh, to help um, in these situations. But uh, <laughs> for me, it's not so easy to uh, talk in this <laughs> in this round because um, I feel it's not easy the whole thing and. Uh, 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 it touches me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, we we did a, I, I, uh, this spring or June, July, we did a survey among the members of Deutsche Jazz Union. And uh, one of the things that just uh, came into my mind is that many people feel very insecure how they should um, act now. They, they want to take these um, aspects into consideration, but they don't know how they they feel they might offend someone, as Lisa was saying, um, and they, they feel very insecure now. So I, I, I think that's something to talk about as well, that, that people feel insecure, definitely. Um, but also, uh, yeah, relating to something also Lisa said is that it, it's not an abstract topic. People are actually, um, excluded in a way and people things discrimination is taking place and it's it's um i think it's something to keep in mind that it's not something that it's um kind of we think about whether it's an option to think about those topics for, for some people it's it's not an option to think about it as i was mentioning earlier so i feel this this kind of it's it's important to realize that and maybe it's important to yeah well talk about talk to some people <laughs> who actually go through that i i don't want to make them retell their stories all the time, but it's kind of, I think it's important not to go out of your comfort zone once in a while and to kind of, because it's, it's a minimal of what other people who are actually discriminated against uh, feel. Do you know what I mean, Benjamin? Well, I'm just talking to you because we talked uh, just now about everyone, I'm not sure. Um, can I just, it's a very thing, um, also, the managing director of Deutsche Jazz Union asked me to take a picture. Um, would it be okay for everyone having the, the video on to have a picture taken, or um, is that a problem? No. Okay, so I, I will just do that. <laughs> and please smile. Ah. Uh, oh, this is nice. Yay. Man. Okay, I will take another picture. Thank you. Yeah, everyone switch on their cameras. <laughs> this is great. So thank you so much for joining us, Lucas. <laughs> cool. There are men. There are men. Oh, yeah. hi, Anka. Hi. <laughs> There's so many more people here. It's, it's kind of cool that um, we have that effect taking a picture. Uh, usually people are just shy away from taking pictures, but this time it's kind of showing your face. I'm, I'm really glad. Hi. <laughs> Does, I, I just want to say... Yeah, uh, please, Anka. 
it's very nice to, to listen to everything and I would also join. But I have a visitor at the same time and people call and so I'm not following everything all the time. So I didn't want to, uh, you know, say something and haven't followed the rest that was before. No, please. I, uh, soon I will listen to the rest and then I would also like to join and then say something because it's very important um, and very, very interesting. But please, please, Anke, feel free to say something. I mean, I, I don't think it's a, a problem if we will repeat something. It's such an important topic. Yeah, I can re relate to everything that was said and uh, especially also Alyssa, what, what you said as a jazz musician, uh, all these things, uh, I take the trumpet of the picture because I so many times, oh, you want to sit in at the jazz session so you're a singer? No, I'm a pianist. Oh, classical pianist. No, no, I'm a jazz pianist. And you always have to prove yourself and you go on stage and people leave the stage because they don't want to play the session. They're only part on the, uh, that evening. They don't want to join you as a woman. So they leave and they say only once, one tune. And when you start playing, then it's okay. But first you have to prove yourself that, um, and that was a long time ago, I should say, but uh, I think still uh, nowadays, sometimes there are these situations that as a woman, you, as a man, it's normal that you come in and you can join at a session, at a jam session or other places. And now you, as a woman, you still have to fight for getting on stage or so. No? These are experiences that yeah, shouldn't be there anymore. No? Or also in juries, I just talked to someone yesterday who was uh, in a jury and, and I also have that that uh, you really want women uh, to apply for, you know, for example, for uh, being a professor uh, or for other things. And then you want so badly that they succeed and that they play well and you, but, but that's also so stupid that you have to, um, that you have a, how do you say, you have this expectation that the, the only female, uh, uh, you know, um, person who's, who's auditioning that you, that you want <laughs> Her to be better or so good that 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 you can you know you can uh, vote for her and uh, should also be normal you know and and I think sometimes it's uh, it's hard uh, uh, you know then uh, someone yesterday said yeah she played good but still the others were better and I really wanted to you know wanted to vote for her but uh, you know and I would have voted for her only because she's a woman but that is also a I think that's a problem. I mean, you can't also vote for someone only because of the of the gender. You want someone who's you know playing well and is or is a good educator or whatever the reason is why you vote for someone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining the discussion, Anka. I feel that. Um, yeah. No, I feel that so many issues come to mind when you while listening to you. I, I feel that, so, for example, like I'm thinking about implicit bias, I think, and quality standards, which are kind of uh, set by people who are in the majority. And we should think about those things also that uh, what we regard as uh, good music is also kind of uh, part of our upbringing and our habitus as Bourdieu says. So I think those are things we should also think about. It's not as easy as there's freedom of art, there's just um, taste and that's the way it is because it comes to be your taste. And um, so we should, I think it's a way to think about it as well. Lisa, yeah. do you want to still join in the discussion? No, okay, sorry, I'm not picking on you. But I, I just want to say again that we should all advocate uh, music being part of education as soon as possible hmm. and in the broadest way that it is it it's not necessarily about jazz music or not but just music to learn about music and to learn to play an instrument it should be available to all children rich and poor i think that's very very important and they can choose which style to do but just let them play yeah we're actually coming to an end of our time. We have like four minutes left. So if anyone else wants to join in the discussion, now is the time. <laughs> I mean, this is not really the end of the discussion. This is just the start. And so if anyone else uh, feels they kind of don't want to talk in this uh, environment and they want to add something, they can also email me I'm on the website of Deutsche Jazz Union. Um, or if you think about something, but is there anything else? Do you want to 
Menschen. Yes, Aline. Hi. Hi. Um, so, yeah, it was really nice following the discussion. And maybe for the end, as you mentioned before, that this shouldn't be a talk only um, um, looking at the bad situation and all the not right states right now. Um, yeah, for me, I have to say, um, I'm studying jazz music, or I just started and um, as an instrumentalist. And I feel very encouraged to continue the fight as it is for equality and diversity and um, yeah, to give it a positive vibe of this talk, I feel very encouraged to just go on and talk with people and friends and um, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, this is good to hear. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyone else want to share at the end? No. Okay, so otherwise I would just say thank you to uh, being part of this discussion. I think it was very interesting and um, I have many more questions and I have to think about what we talked about, but I feel that it's already good to have a discussion at all and think about it and address those issues we have. So thank you very much for being part of this. Um, if there are any students who want to get credit for this, please uh, write your names or send me an email. <laughs> I feel that some of you might be students. Um, otherwise, I don't know how to acknowledge that. Um, for all of you, um, well, keep, keep, keep fighting the fight. Uh, keep thinking about those issues. Uh, thanks, Odd. Thanks, Alistair. And thanks, Katya, for being part of this and for agreeing to talk to me about your work. And thanks to everyone else uh, for joining in the discussion and listening to us. Um, okay, Eric, I answer your question in an email I sent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so goodbye, everyone, and uh, talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ciao.